to item 14, and I know Councillor Cashmore, you'd signal to me that you wished to. I'll move this, ma'am. To move this. Happy to second, Madam Chair. Happy to second. It's pretty straightforward. We might just get some additional comments from either Jacques or John. Jacques? Kia ora tato. John Morrow, Chief Sustainability Officer. Um, Madam Chair, would you like uh, two or three minutes or? Um, <laughs> I think we, this is a, a pretty straightforward <coughs> item and we are hoping to break at 12.30. Fantastic. So perhaps brief introductory remarks would be appreciated. Great. Um, there is a PowerPoint I believe you have in front of you. We probably don't need to get it up on, this, on the screen. Um, the background here is that um, this came to your committee in a, maybe a, perhaps a nicer time of the year in March, um, and there was a resolution passed that required more financial information to come back, and that's what this is. You have that in front of you. Um, the quick story is that um, <coughs> The sustainability savings that we've achieved over the last four years since amalgamation, about one to three million a year, um, is carrying over to about 12.7 million over the last four. Um, and those savings are harder and harder to get. And so the main reason for our membership to C40 is that, oh, I guess we do have the uh, presentation. Um, I will flip through very quickly. Um, those savings up there um, are probably not complete. There's probably a lot more uh, that we just haven't discovered yet that we've actually saved. But um, the point is, it's harder and harder to get savings and sustainability um, the more you pick the low-hanging fruit. So membership, ostensibly, is to allow us the opportunity to get access to resources, uh, to best practice, and to technical advice from cities um, that are doing the same kind of work we're doing, and it makes it cheaper for us to do so. They've done the hard yards, and essentially we could benefit from that. Um, just a little bit about resources and costs. There's no membership fee. Um, there's limited staff time required. In fact, most of this stuff is already in train in our existing work program. So it's an opportunity for us, frankly, to get some recognition and some encouragement and work that we're already doing. Um, there's one quick point that I, I would make that's not in the report. Um, Friday, we learned that C40 are, uh, are, are quite full of applications for this year, and there's a slight chance that we won't be able to put an application in by the end of this year, but that 2016 is available to us. That's new information, but my sense is that that doesn't really change things that much because we have to prepare the application, and that's going to take some time. So I'm happy to take any questions if I, if I need to. Just one quick uh, question, Madam Chair, then a comment, if I may, when you finish the questions. Yeah, thanks very much, John. Initially, a lot of us were, were anxious that this was going to be a, a, a cost to Council. It was going to occur extra work, staff time, and so forth. We've, there's been $12.7 million worth of savings to date, and they are going to get harder to identify. Yep. We've got the easiest ones first. Could you give us a couple of examples of what potentially some of those ongoing savings could be and what they could mean? Yeah, sure. That's a great question uh, through the chair. Um, you know, right now we're doing things like um, bulk retrofits of LED lights, um, and we're doing that in 135 Albert Street, and that alone, well, with a, with a couple other small things, is saving us about half a million a year in energy costs. Um, so those would be the those would be the easy wins. Um, and I think as we look ahead with the technologies that are coming online, things like you know solar and battery that actually make it a lot more viable, we see costs coming down. Those are the kinds of things that you know we need to be savvy about how we pluck those savings um, and address um, you know our need to get a little savvier about uh, uh, working harder harder to achieve them. Thank you, Madam Chair. My, my other comments, Madam, would be just basically. Initially, as I said earlier, I was very, very sceptical about this proposal and thought, well, you know, it's just another think tank and what's it going to achieve. But when you actually start putting it together with some of our other work, and particularly with the uh, tripartite alliance with Guangzhou and LA, which are also members of, of uh, C40, there is some real potential for us to align a lot of our development work with trade and enterprise, benchmark our systems, benchmark our savings, and working with other international cities, Auckland being New Zealand's only international city, work with those other cities, work with Portland, work with Seattle to see where we can gain future benefits and better alignments with those people going forward. Now, there will be transformational shifts in transport. You, know, you look at, talk to the work that's been done in Seattle, and I know um, Mr Quinn's been there and seen some of that stuff. You know, we are 
not necessarily behind the eight ball, but we have some catching up to do, and we are, we are seeing some shifts, and some of the Auckland Transport Alignment Project work will identify that as well. So this potential C40 membership that we're going to get isn't going to happen overnight. It, it takes three stages. It's not going to add a huge amount of cost, but potentially it puts us in with a club of cities that are all trying to achieve similar sort of things. So to me, that benchmark is like you do in business. You compare what you're doing with those around you and those offshore with the aim to doing it better. That gives you quantitative advantage. So, Madam Chair, I do uh, support this. Happy to have moved it. I think it's got good alignment with where we're trying to go to and what we want to achieve in the future. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Cashmore. I've got Member Taipere and then <coughs> Councillor oh, Walker and... Um, and Councillor Ward. Okay, so I think we're sort of in, into the debate and Councillor Crump. So we've had Cashmore, Taipari, Walker, Brewer, Ward, Crump. Get a minute, Chair. Uh, so very supportive of the recommendation and uh, it is of uh, particular significance to Māori and particularly around Kaitakatanga. Uh, and have picked up about the working group uh, that's been established. What I'm just not aware of is how's the uh, Māori Action Plan being incorporated? And uh, and just to follow on from that, more of a statement, that um, any other uh, documentation that's been developed for the C40, uh, the Independent Māori Social Board is very keen to see that, uh, in particular where it relates to Māori outcomes. So just a question about the Māori um, Action Plan. Thank you, Member Taipei, through the Chair. Um, I think the easiest way to answer that is to say that the work program in train that this really helps accelerate and implement is the Low Carbon Auckland Action Plan. And there was a pretty extensive process undertaken, and it's described in the report in brief, um, to do relatively extensive engagement with Maori and also to develop a, uh, a Maori action plan that went hand in hand with low carbon. And so because this is part of that work program, um, that uh, early involvement and continuous involvement will be integral to that process, and we have full intention of uh, continuing that work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we've got Councillor Walker. Yeah, um, I'd just like to add to the comments that Councillor Cashmore uh, made. Uh, as far as the club is concerned that um, Councillor Cashmore refers to, the advantage that we've got is that we're actually a tiny city compared to the other cities that are in C40. Most of them are mega cities. So in terms of <coughs> taking advantage of the business opportunities, the procurement um, opportunities, uh, we stand to benefit probably, I think, more than any of them. <laughs> you know, um, So we're going to be really well off. <coughs> the other thing that needs to be emphasised is, as much and all as this is really good for council, it's especially good for business because the business opportunities in this sector, sustainability sector, are phenomenal. It is the fastest growing uh, business um, uh, area on the planet. So marvellous opportunity for businesses. And that ties in with the tripartite relationship that Councillor Cashmore mentioned, the Chinese and, and um, LA. And the other thing that's really great is it involves our communities. This is not just the council again that's getting involved, it's our businesses, it's our communities, we all stand to benefit. And the last point I'd make is Auckland's the only city in New Zealand that's going to get involved in this, and we're very fortunate to even be asked. So we can actually help other cities in New Zealand by what we pick up on. So it's not just good for Auckland, it's good for New Zealand. Thank you. So yes from Councillor Walker. I've got Councillor Brewer, Wood, Crum, and I think then we'll need to... <coughs> Thank it. you, Madam Chair. Well, <coughs> sometimes uh, it's a disadvantage to us as lo in local government that we don't get political advice from, from staff because the political advice would be uh, very clear cut on this, Madam Chair, and it's what I raised back in, in March, and that is we haven't got the political capital as an organisation and as a grouping. Uh, to sign this off. Sure, uh, sure, we, um, there is claimed to be no additional fund required or sought, but that, of course, is a, um, <coughs> uh, a, a, the same line that was given to uh, in and around uh, resource spent on TPPA and in and around resource spent 
on uh, the naming of, renaming of development Auckland. Uh, and so I just think that this is something, as I raised in March, Madam Chair, uh, given the feedback that we had uh, and uh, all the hundreds of thousands we spent on consultation, uh, the feedback we had for us to really uh, focus in and around and getting our financial affairs in order and core business, uh, I think this is just uh, joining this at this time uh, is, is a hiding uh, to, to nowhere uh, from the public. And we can argue, as we did, as some did with Panuku Auckland and TPPA, uh, that this didn't cost us anything. Um, but as we all know, uh, that's not the public perception, is, and nor is that what the public is wanting from us at this time in the electoral cycle. So this is another one that I would have put up um, uh, uh, for October the 9th, uh, 2016, to be looked at, and, and not now. Um, and my concern is, uh, while there might be the argument of no additional funding is sought or required, the mission creep that will inevitably happen, and I, I lead you to paragraph 25, Madam Chair, uh, Auckland will be an observer city for its first year. Following that, Auckland would seek to become an innovator city. To become an innovator city, Auckland would need to be internationally recognised for barrier-breaking climate work, be a leader in the field of environmental sustainability, and be a regionally recognised anchor city. And it goes on. And I suppose my case is, by the time we get to the debate, uh, whenever that happens, of Innovator City, there'll be no turning back. Uh, 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 Councillor Brewer, uh, of course, you will remember uh, back on the uh, 15th of October 2015 uh, that you signed up to be C40, and it was inevitable that we become an Innovator City. Oh, but it was no... It was no, uh, um, officer, there was no additional funding sort of required. Oh, well, that was for uh, C40. Uh, that was for that decision. But being an innovative city, we need to spend A, B, and C, and we can't go back on that commitment. Can't you hear it? Yes. So let's just put the brakes on this. Let's wait for the next mayor and incoming council uh, to focus on this. Otherwise, again, you can look at, it plays into my, my politics nicely. Great, go for it. I'd encourage you. Um, but, uh, again, it's going to be another TPPA, another Panuku uh, Development Auckland debate. Let's not go there. We haven't got the political capital to go out to the public and announce that we're part of a, um, part of a new international club today. Councillor, that's a no from Councillor Brewer. Councillor Wood. Yeah, it's going to be a no from me as well, unfortunately. Um, but, look, I, I, you know, councillors should be aware that we are members of ICLE. Yes, the International <coughs> Council for Local Environmental Initiatives. And uh, I think <coughs> Councillor Wayne Walker's um, very um, pushy, pushes um, ICLE. And uh, there, I'm not aware of what the fee is, but there is a fee to be involved in ICLE. And here we are now, are we going to discard ICLE? Because it says in the report, oh, well, similar, they do similar things, but, uh, you know, this is more prestigious, C40. Um, I think it's got the kind of a whiff of a TPPA um, um, environment that uh, <coughs> Councillor Walker was so concerned about the other day, but now he uh, sees it a, in a different perspective. But ICLA has been around since 2000, uh, 1990. 1990, it was formed in the U UN when 200 local governments came together from 43 countries and they um, set up this organisation. And now it involves 1,200 uh, um, councils or local authorities in 84 countries. And uh, we are part of that. So why would we now want to break away from that or say that that's not good enough for Auckland and we're now going to head off to the C40 group, <coughs> which if you look at that, um, the, the names there, they are well up for the pecking order as international cities in compared to Auckland. I think that we're trying to run before we can actually crawl here. We've got a lot of work to do in Auckland. And, you know, public transport, we talk about it. You go overseas and uh, Auckland public transport pales into insignificance in relation to what other cities have done. And uh, I, I just have... That, that's a concern I have. But the, the cost issue... We've heard this before, councillors. Yeah. We've heard it before. This won't cost us anything. This will be 
um, cost neutral. We're going to get so much benefit out of it. Well, next year there's a 